Hello, my name is Dickie Barrett. I'm in the Mighty Mighty Boston. You'll see the balls from Elwood, the balls from Elwood show, I believe. Enjoy yourself. Hey now, cats, we're back again this week on the balls from Elwood show. We have such a jam packed show. I have no time. We can't mess around. We got to get to the goods. Ex Tina, why am I so excited? Yeah, because we have the one, the only, Dickie Barrett of the Mighty Mighty Boston on the balls from Elwood show. Believe it or not. We really have Dickie. How the hell did we land that one? Well, apparently, he's a huge Howard Stern fan. Who would have thunk? Uh-huh. How about that? But anywho, uh, I am very proud to present you this interview, Cats. This is a man that I have admired my whole life. I've been a Boston fan since I was 14. I'm now a 43-year-old man. Still love them just as much as the day I discovered them. Uh, I want to just get right into it. Uh, I, I have to say, Dickie, it could not be... Uh, I've met him several times before. A lot of times he was drunk. I was drunk. I mean, uh, but this time was... It's amazing what you can do when you're both sober. Yeah, it's, it really uh, is. What a, you know, well, what a difference it makes. So, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that being said, Cats, uh, I'm going to get right into it. I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did having, uh, having it with him. So, uh, tell me what you think. Make sure you hit like and subscribe on Battle Chats and uh, leave some comments for us. And we're back again this week on the Balls from Elwood show. And with me this week, if anybody knows balls, since I've been a, since, well, I've never really been a little kid, but when I've been a kid, <laughs> you've not, this man is somebody that I've admired. Uh, his music has got me through the low points of my life and has been the soundtrack to all the good parts of my life. And I can't thank him for the opportunity enough. With me this week is the amazing. Dickie Barrett. Oh, you're too kind. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. How you been? The, I've been great, man. Are I you just stunned been, that I that I know so much about Howard Stern? I am super, man. Like I never thought. You know, in a million like when years. you watch the Boston, did you think, oh, he knows about Howard Stern too? No, not at all. Like yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's the a, only thing that got you through the door balls was the fact that you you actually called. Well, I'm glad I played that card, sir, because like no. I try not to, because sometimes it turns people off. You know? No, no, no. Come, come right in. Oh, oh, it's balls. Oh, come in. Well, it's funny. I'm uh, in we're Pittsburgh, and then he goes, and he goes, he's from the Howard Stern show. I go, is it balls or Pittsburgh Pete? Oh, who is it? Bring him in. Oh, pardon me. I didn't mean to offend. Oh, you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but anyway, no. I'm I sorry. Mean, I, I didn't mean to offend. I you. think it's flattering. Actually, I, I love the fact like. I didn't think you could actually be higher on my pedestal, ah. but now that you did, now it's like up here. I'm going to throw you out if you keep complimenting me. Okay, well. I'm very uncomfortable with that. Well, eat my butt then. I mean, <laughs> how's that? Is that better? Yeah. I'm much more comfortable with that. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting interview. <laughs> but actually, I want to just take you back to the very beginning of, I mean, uh, your, your music's always been fused with ska. I mean, you're pretty much the godfather of ska core. Uh, well, I gave myself that name, and uh, my my pal Jimmy calls me the Godfather of Scott Court too, only because I I gave I gave myself that name. But um, so you want to go back to thirty years ago? Well, I want to know yesterday. What is that definitive moment like? What was the definitive band or that feeling? Who got you in the sky? And when did you know? Oh, it was oh gonna I be know it? when that happened. I know exactly when that happened. I went to um, see the Pretenders. I bought a concert ticket as a, as a seventeen year old kid to see the Pretenders in Boston. And um, and the English beat opened up for them, and I love the Pretenders. They were they they put on a great show. But the opening act, the English beat, they were insanely good. They were so good. Dave Wakeling and Ranking Roger and uh, Saxon the saxophone and 
and then I had to get that record. And then my friend said, well, you got to check these out. And he gave me the specials record. And it, and it was all what they call second wave, two-tone ska that I fell in love with. Like, I had no idea it had anything to do with Jamaica or reggae or what was going on in the, you know, the 50s and 60s in, in uh, Jamaica. I had no, I didn't know what it was derivative of. I just knew that it was had the same energy and the same feeling as punk rock and the same sort of we've got something to say, but it also had this sort of, sort of, it was very, very musical and very, very danceable and very, and you know, it's, it had, it had some urgency and some, some desperation and some, you know, hey, this isn't a perfect planet, but it also made you feel like this. And I fell in love, and, and, and the English Beat presented it in such a way on that, on that fateful day when I went to see The Pretenders at, um, at the Paradise, no, it wasn't the Paradise, it was the Orpheum Theater in downtown Boston, and I was just a kid, and, and from there on in, I was hooked, and I just wanted to be a part of it. I just wanted to be involved. To make a long answer even longer, that's for me, <laughs> I was in. And then, I guess, you know, the Mighty Mighty Boston's are part of what is known as third wave ska. But for me, I fell in love with T-Tone and, and then I started getting my education and going, oh, okay, you know, Prince Buster, Desmond Decker and the Scatolites and all those great Jamaican groups that were the originators. Um, then from there, that, that was, you know, and I, and I love them as well, so. Uh, that, that being said, that leads me to my next question. I mean, you've always been uh, you know, a staple of, of the ska scene uh, since I've been very young. Can you tell me, do you feel like the scene has changed and is it for the better or the worse? Um, I think that, no, well, here's what it is. I think that there is, there is long as, it's a, it's a genre of music that, you know, if, if you love ska music the way both me and you, then we're rude boys. It's in our heart. We're just, we're just you know, we're for life. all <laughs> things that, that, you know, symbolize and all things that indicate ska music it's 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 in here on us and and you know it's like a well, you know a vespa will drive by us and we'll go oh that's awesome <laughs> or somebody will walk by and appear at dark minds and go oh right on you know or whatever it is and, you know so whatever the symbolism is and, and and the music and the song so i think that you know w no i think the answer the short answer is no i don't think it's changed i think that it's what it's always sort of been just sort of this respect and this love for really good bands and, and you know there's both you know good ska music and bad ska music and what we did to it because i was you know part of the boston hardcore scene when you could talk about bands like ssd or or gang green that joe our bass player played in or my band was called impact unit and um you know there were the fu's and the and the freeze and the, this great sort of punk rock scene that coincided with bands in DC like Minor Thread or Black Flag in LA but we had our thing in Boston so I was from that so what we did was sort of kind of bastardize and, and merge these two things and said you know I hope no one finds too much disrespect here but but that's what you know where we came from so you know and then we said oh you know and people were like well what do you call yourselves and we we're like well we call ourselves the Boston's you know but what is this you're doing and we really didn't have an answer because I don't think even we knew. And then we just said, "Oh, it's called ska core," and now that's like a legitimate subgenre. Subgenre, but it's just a word we made up because we got tired of saying, "Well, we don't like to be categorized." And then it's like, "All right, you insist on categorizing us." So, so here it is. So go with <laughs> ska core because we don't want to, out of respect to the great ska bands, and out of respect to you know, it's certainly not hardcore anymore. So. Well, let me ask you this. You've been all over the world. You're known as like one of the most touring bands in the world. I don't know how you do it. Like, well, how do you well we toured more than we do now. Now I have, have my day job. Uh, and uh, Joe, Joe's a professor of uh, music in, in Vermont. And, um, you know, all the guys have other stuff. A couple of the guys own uh, recording studios. And, uh, but we get together as much as we can, more than we had been for a while, and do as many shows as we possibly can each year. You know, we have families and, and things have certainly changed from the, from the old days. But, but yes, when we did tour, we, we, put, in, we put in the work, 300, more than 300 shows a year. And, uh, and now, when you see us tonight here in Pittsburgh at Mr. Small's, you'll, uh, 
you know, for those of you listening, you've missed it. Sorry. But, uh, boy, did you miss out. That was great. Let's just say that. Oh, boy, it was good. I, how, how good was I? Oh, my. He's always, he's always <laughs> amazing. I mean, God. But anyway, I think we still. There was, it. like, strippers and cannons. And, yeah. and, uh, I fired a stripper out of a cannon. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I, I, what, I, what I also want to ask you is, I mean, you've been all over. You've toured extensively. Yes. But is there one, just, like, one venue or one show that's, that sticks out in your mind as the best? Um, I think, the, you know, the last two shows we did on this tour were great, were really good. We played uh, Rochester last night at a smaller sized venue and then Webster Hall in New York City the night before and, and they were great. I mean, it, 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 here's what goes on. I get on stage with my best friends, people that love the Boston's stand in front and we just celebrate that. And that, I mean, the, the, so they're all so damn good. And at my advanced age, Balls, I'm so psyched to be able to do it. I don't know how you do it when, like, when. Thank you. Uh, Thank I really you. And don't. I'm not going like, to tell you, Balls, because if I did, you'd do it, and then I'm. I'm fucked. 43. I feel like shit. I could barely cart my fat ass around. <laughs> He's on stage. Most yeah. fucking amazing I get show my fat ass every up fucking there, balls. night. <laughs> uh, yeah. I do. <laughs> I wanted to know, what are some of your musical guilty pleasures? Oh my God, I have so many. I drive this band crazy. My favorite artist of all time, who uh, I, to the ends of the earth, I love Neil Diamond. Now my favorite band of all time is The Clash. I love The Clash and I, I just love them. And, and, and that's then awesome. Madness. And it's Madness and The Clash that flips back. But so many guilty play. I mean, look at the songs we cover. I love Burt Backrack. We, we, we released what the, what the World Needs Now is Love. Um, I uh, love that. It was awesome. <coughs> yeah, we do. Um, we're doing The Birds. We're doing uh, Roger McGuinn, a song called uh, The Ballad of Easy Rider on this tour because Peter Fonda died. Yeah. Um, we're oh, doing, you know, I have so many. Think of the soul songs that start our show whether it's temptations or stevie wonder and, and yeah, i don't I think love any all that of that Motown stuff man i mean i just uh i yeah. just recently had Smokey robinson visit me at work yeah tell me how oh, awesome i know what, that i know what, i know what my uh, my guilty pleasure is i love uh, uh dr hook and the medicine children Ooh. sylvia's mother Ooh. check that song it was written by sal sal shell uh, silverstein um who wrote the giving tree he also wrote a lot of the dr hook songs uh, is that Dr. Hook? Dr. Hook, is that uh, who the fuck is Alice? Is that who uh, you doc, uh, Dr. Hook is a um, uh, cover of a Rolling Stone. Yeah, oh, that was the same people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they did who the fuck is Alice, that. And then it was one year in love with a beautiful woman. Was that yeah. It? Yeah, I yes. love them guys. That was great, man. That's, that's great stuff, right? Oh, absolutely. But uh, moving along, I'm trying to get through. I, don't, I, know you, I know you got stuff to do, and I'm trying to. I just don't want to talk anymore. I got to sing tonight. Um. Is my biggest problem, and you know what the problem is? You ask me a question, and they're good questions, and then I go off. So if you keep asking, <laughs> well, I tell you what, I rapid fire get through these. Just give me quick answers. And All right, let's how's go. that? We're gonna do We're the, the, speed this, the speed round, folks. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. The speed round coming up. Here we go. I'm gonna even be like, I'll even be like, a, I'll even be like an announcer, like a game show. This. You press your luck. No way, me. No way, me. Stop. What experiences in this band has changed you as a person? Next question. <laughs> I've been attending your show since high school. Yes. Where did your drive and determination and True. constant twerk <laughs> come True. from? And have, from, you, from have you ever people, lost it? I'll tell you exactly where it is. And from people that have come to see me since high school. Next question. Awesome. Right. What are, do you like horror films? And if so, what is your favorite? Um, I have trouble with horror films. I get so scared. I watched um, the uh, the one recently where the fa the families. It just came out not that long ago. It's uh, that P guy Peels movie. Uh, Us. Us, yeah. I mean, the I, I get so scared. I get so scared. I can't even imagine you scared, man. No, no, I get, I get that stuff that's creepy, and I'm like, oh shit, that could probably happen. And then I get, uh, mm, I, I appreciate him. I like uh, my friend D. Snyder. I like the movies he did. Strangely, uh, yeah, I oh, like yeah. his. And, uh, Absolutely. They're doing another. He's doing he another one. Is he really? Oh yeah. He's really good at it. Oh yeah. Man, I've he? been waiting for a fall for years. It was awesome. Yeah. He's, he's a great guy. He's a really, really good guy. I really like that He's guy. on my bucket list. I'd like to talk to him. He's great. He's very talkable. Is there a song in your whole catalog that you ever regret making and why? Uh, I don't regret any of the songs I almost made that I would have regretted. But uh, no, I don't regret any of them. There's some I like more than others. 
There's some that are tedious. There's some that we made that are like, eh, that's not that good. But but no regrets. I don't go, you know, it's not. There's never like when somebody yells something out and you're like, ah, oh, No. Fuck. No, I didn't. No. I, 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 honestly, I, I, I'm very thoughtful. I write all the lyrics, so I'm very, th I, th I really, really think about it. It's, it's the thing I think I do better. If, if any of the stuff I do, okay, I think it's writing the lyrics for the Boston's. And, and because they let me do it, that's, you know, a lot of guys have to sort of back what you're saying. So you don't want to be insensitive or that kind of thing. And, and I'm, that makes sense. I'm, I don't know. I'm, 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 uh, Can you tell my audience one thing about you th that may surprise you as a fan? Like something? Yeah, yeah this sign uh, right here. That's a that's a system hair system. No shit. Yeah, they mail it to me. Amazing. They mail it to me every every. Uh, yeah. Thank you for sharing. It's wow. not a, it's not a hair system. So oh, so is this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a hair system. Come on, Bobo. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it. Just turned what twenty two years old, I believe. Let's face did it. Yeah, I think I'll so. take your word for it. I know that, like I said, I know Devil's Night turned 30 yesterday. Would you ever think, I mean, it's become an anthem for equality and so many good and positive things. Yeah. Hey, that's something I do kind of regret in that, in that song. I use the word tolerance, give tolerance a try. And I've been thinking about it like since now, but I'm glad that let's face it, the, the song is that people still have. But I know when I wrote it, I didn't imagine in a million years that it would still be something, you know, 22 I, I years know, is, later. Does it upset you that, like, it's... Uh, you would think things would be better it. now. It seems like things are worse, and we need that song even more now, uh, th now these days. Yeah, I mean, it always upsets me. Ignorance and, 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 you know, hate and anything short of love, of course, upsets me. And, I, and, I, and you know, I don't, I don't really want to call for tolerance. Tolerating people, that's, that's you know... That, that, this, that, what we should do is throw it all away and go, hey... You know, you, you, your friends and, and, and people that you can unite with are, are, are you know, come in all shapes, sizes, colors. And it's a, a cliche and it's tiring because it, long before I started saying these things, people had been saying it. And, and it's, you know, my allies and my closest friends, you know, are, are all different types of people. If there's I can't even imagine a being a person that limits yourself in life for even you know like oh i can be friends with this person but i can't be friends with this person no I can do this but i can't be friends no with because this person was born this way yeah this it's person so fucked up it's worships ridiculous. this way or this person chooses to love this yeah, sex and most and of the time it. nobody none of the, these things even affect anybody in the not, not, and, and but everybody's so fight mad for years. stupid shit no so. it's so dumb and we currently have a president that's really really into dividing people to, to, to separating people and to, to you know putting everybody in groups and categories and you're over here and you're this and you're that and I'm dead set against that and never have been my what we try to do is bring people unity. together unity unified well we're coming to the very end here I have a couple fun questions we're almost done so you can Dickie oh, oh the speed round I think our, our, our yes the speed the, round really took it ever. well I mean uh, yeah, I'm a little slow, yeah. so. This is it, man. I got like a, a couple. This is the of last one. We're going to go to the end. We're going to end on the fun one. There we go. Okay, awesome. Do you have a good shit your pants story? <laughs> I was... The, the right. pie tasters had a really good one. I don't know if you're going to be able to beat that. Steve but, did? But, yeah, yeah, Steve. Steve Jackson. No, but they're the champions. I ask everybody, and it's been three years, and nobody's beat Steve Jackson yet. So. It was years and years ago. I was in my early 20s. And I got up, I'd been out all night drinking, and I was on one side of Boston, but I lived on the other side of Boston. And my money, of course, was gone. I had no money. So I was walking across town, was, uh, was my, you know, I couldn't get on the T or the train, and I had to walk across town. And halfway there, it was Sunday morning, early, and halfway there, I was like, ah, I gotta go to the bathroom. And it got worse and worse, and then it, then it kind of became, should I head for this gas station that's down this way? <coughs> I got a half mile, I think, now to the house. And it was really becoming, and the more you walk, the more urgent it becomes, and the more it's in, now it's in your head, and then, then it'll pass, and go, no, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it. There's no need to go in this store here, <laughs> but I, I, I'm gonna make it, I'll be on the home throne in no time. <laughs> 
by the time I hit my street, I'm like, now if I run, that could send it out of me, but something like this. If you're clenching. Like this, I'm clenching. The John Wayne. Up the stairs. Keys. I don't have my key. Eh, eh, oh my gosh, I hope my room. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> then a pair of shorts. <laughs> I made the bathroom. I made it to the bathroom. Photo finish. But not to the toilet. Oh! oh. Luckily, oh. there's a shower. But I ran by my roommate holding my shorts like this. <laughs> yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank what you an so much, that. everybody. Thank uh, you. Th I want to thank that. Is there anything that you'd like to plug? I'd I like know. to say hello, Steve Jackson. I'd like you to watch uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Please encourage that. Um, we have a, we had an album we released last year called While We're At It. Incredible. Thank you for Check saying so. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much, Dickie. This thank was you. a once in a lifetime. No, Please listen to the boss tone. Yes, it is once in a lifetime, Bones. I don't want to ever see you again. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I get that a lot, so don't worry <laughs> about it. <laughs> and we're back, cats, and uh, now it's time for everybody's favorite part of this show. You know her, you love her, you've been waiting for the most fucked up story of the week, and it's this lady, X Tina, and her depravity corner. X Tina, what do you have for us today? Well, today I decided we're going to mix it up a little. Uh, since everybody's, you know, been chatting lately about all this gun violence and, and there's been a crap ton of gun violence which is super shitty don't get me wrong um, we've apparently been neglecting the stabbings that have been going on in this country you know what I do feel like stabbings aren't getting their fair shake with yeah, all I mean, the gun violence right? so, it's, I mean. it's you know the, the knives need uh, love too I don't I don't know if that's quite right but eh, anyway I digress let's talk about it so there seems to be an equal amount of stabbings going on in this country as there are guns. In fact, probably more stabbings. Uh, lately, it seems to have been a just a bizarre uh, land. Apparently, and this flew under my radar, and of course I don't live in California, so maybe that's why, but um, if this was a gun battle, it would be considered a mass shooting so why is it not considered a mass stabbing i don't know but regardless in garden grove uh, a few weeks ago uh california where our buddy speech impediment lives hope, hope you're okay speech i mean we haven't heard from you in a while Ooh, we probably better check on him maybe there was a sh uh, stabbing rampage some dude went on a stabbing rampage, stabbed some kid working at the subway. Jesus. I know. Then he went to the 7-Eleven, and some dude's just randomly pumping gas. I know myself, I'm always looking around when I'm pumping gas, just because it's, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, there's some creepy element about it, I guess. I don't know. So, especially at nighttime. Hmm. Well, yeah, especially at nighttime. But, um, you know, some dude just stabbed some random dude that was pumping his gas. Um, and then this dude went on to um, stab people. I don't know if they were just like walking or what, but he went on to stab several people. I don't know how many. He, he, he ultimately killed four people. That's four human beings he killed. And I think two more were severely injured. I mean, what the hell? And it was, again, luckily I think they got the guy, but you know, what, 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 why? And he, well, he was robbing people and, and he was taking, you know, money and this and that and whatever, but I don't get it. And there's been a lot of stabbings. We live in Pittsburgh. And as of yesterday, we've now had our third stabbing downtown Pittsburgh in broad daylight, mind you, uh, of a man stabbing a woman. Um, so far one has died. Um, there's been just the other ones have been well just injured but you know I don't really want to be stabbed so I can't imagine it's very fun so I wouldn't negate they're just injured uh, but yeah broad daylight 1230 on a Friday at you know lunchtime in a busy city and some woman gets stabbed in broad daylight like what the actual hell is going on in this world it's scary how can we like live like this, you know? I have a friend who lives down there or works down there and I texted her and said, are you okay? Are you uh, in need of like protection or something? Like this is nuts. But the ultimate, the absolute ultimate stabbing situation that freaked me the hell out was this man went into a beauty shop in Queens, New York and he, 
Um, there was nothing going on. They, I, unfortunately, and you can watch this if you're fucked up like me, I didn't, I didn't really know if I wanted to watch this. I didn't even really know if I knew what I was going to watch. I think I kind of knew, but I clicked the button because I'm kooky like that. And sure as shit, I watched this man murder somebody. Uh, yeah, it's pretty fucked up because it's a surveillance video in a uh, beauty shop in Queens. And this hairdresser, she's just sitting there. You know, they weren't very busy. There was just mostly workers, maybe one customer. And um, I think she was sitting at her station and she might have been on her phone, checking her phone. And the next thing you know, this man like storms into the building and he just run, rushes over to her. And just all you see is Ugh. this motion. And he's stabbing, stabbing. And these women, of course, they don't want to get stabbed either, but they did try. Like, there was a woman coming at him, and she was trying to get him off of her. And then this other girl, this was kind of, I thought, a good thought. She comes over with a chair. She's trying to, like, beat him with a chair, but, you know, also use it as a shield to protect herself in the event that he would get to her. And then you see, like, people, you know, hiding behind the counters. And then you see them trying to, like, run and, like, sneak out the door. And so this goes on for probably, like, a couple of minutes. And the next thing you know, this man is lying on the ground, I kid you not, in the pool of blood with the woman he killed, cuddling her. Ugh. And in between that... He took a drink of water because I guess you get pretty thirsty when I you're mean, on a you stabbing get rampage. I when you're on a stabbing rampage. I mean, I guess. Course. But it turns out, of course, who was it? Her ex-husband. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, she was talking to other men. Can't do that, you know. Uh, so this poor girl died, 35 years old. You know, no reason, just because some dickhead's jealous. Like seriously, get over it. Find someone else. To torment. Move on. Yes. There's no reason for this shit. I'm over it. I'm over all this, like, stupidity. But what was mind-boggling and, and so, you know, heart-wrenching is just the, the quickness of it. You know? Just like, here we are, one minute, boom, instantly, life gone. Like, it's unreal. You know, people need to start taking this shit more serious. Life is precious. You know, we might not all have the best lives. We might not all have, you know... Uh, you know, everything we want in life, of course, but Jesus, you know, life is freaking precious. Just be kind to each other. I don't see why that's, why is this so complicated? Why? Uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, be nice. Well, I'm not making any promises. <laughs> well, that's all I've got. You got any comments? I, uh, <laughs> again, I mean, uh, pretty much in the same thing you're saying. I mean, I don't know how hard is it to just go out in the world. I'm not a people person. I really don't like people at all. But I can at least interact with them in right. everyday society. I you don't mean, need to uh, go stabbing them. Uh, I haven't know. stabbed anybody yet. Not that you don't want to, but you know. We'll, yeah, talk, we'll talk about that in another episode. That's a whole episode. other episode. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm stab free. So. Yeah, stab if I can free. do it, anybody can that's do it. That's right. That's all we're that's saying. That's right. That's been uh, this episode of the Balls from Elwood Show. We hope you enjoyed it. And that's been this episode of the Pravity Corner. Hope you enjoyed it. We will see you next week, cats. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love.